hi, hi, hi. Here we are again for another part of Terry Pratchett's A Hat Full of Sky, second book in the Tiffany Aiken series. I really apologise for not being on last night. I've got an ear infection Blech. I've picked up from somewhere. Um, if my reading's a bit flat tonight, it's because I can't hear out of this ear at the moment. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. But I will try my hardest just for you. So, here we go. It wasn't unusual for girls as young as Tiffany to go into service. It meant working as a maid somewhere. Traditionally, you started by helping an old lady who lived by herself. She wouldn't be able to pay much, but since this was your first job, you probably weren't worth much either. In fact, Tiffany practically ran home for Farms Dairy by herself. In some, If someone helped her lift the big milk chances and her parents had a been surprised she had wanted to go into service at all. But, as Tiffany said, it was something everyone did. You got out into the world a little bit, you met new people, you never knew what it could lead to. That, rather cunningly, got her mother on her side. Her mother's rich aunt had gone off to be a scullery maid, and then a parlour maid, and had worked her way up until she was a housekeeper, and married to a butler, and lived in a fine house. It wasn't her fine house and she only lived in a little bit of it but she was practically a lady. Tiffany didn't intend to be a lady this was all a ruse anyway and Miss Tick was in on it. You weren't allowed to char charge money for the witching so all witches did <coughs> some other job as well excuse me. Miss Tick was basically a witch disguised as a teacher. She travelled around with the other wandering teachers who went in bands from place to place teaching anybody anything in exchange for food or old clothes. It was a good way to get around because people in the chalk country didn't trust witches. They thought they danced around on moonlit nights without their drawers on. Tiffany had made inquiries about this and had been slightly relieved to find out that you didn't have to do this to be a witch. You could if you wanted to, but only if you were certain where all the nettles, thistles and hedgehogs were, that is. But if it came to it, people were a bit wary of the wandering teachers too. They were said to pinch chickens and steal away children, which is true in a way. And they went from village to village with their gaudy cuts and wore long robes with leather pads on their sleeves and strange flat hats and talked amongst themselves using heathen lingo no one could understand, like Allier Jack Dazed and quid pro quo it wasn't quite easy from it was quite easy for miss tick to lurk amongst them her pointy hat was a stealth version which looked just like a black straw hat with paper flowers on it until he pressed the secret spring over the last year or so tiffany's mother had been quite surprised and a little worried at tiffany's sudden thirst for education which people in the village would thought was a good thing in moderation but taken unwisely could lead to restlessness then a month ago the message had come be ready miss tick in her flowery hat had visited the farm and had explained to mr and mrs aiken that an elderly lady up in the mountains had heard of tiffany's excellent prowess with cheese and was willing to offer her the post of maid at four dollars a month one day off a week her own bed and a week's holiday at hogswatch tiffany knew her parents three dollars a month was a bit low and five dollars would be suspiciously high, but prowess with cheese was worth the extra dollar, and a bed all to yourself was a very nice perk. Before most of Tiffany's sisters had left home, sleeping two sisters to a bed had been normal. It was a good offer. Her parents had been impressed and slightly scared of Miss Tick, but they had been brought up to believe that people who knew more than you and used long words were quite important. So they'd agreed. Tiffany accidentally heard them discussing it after she had gone to bed that night. It's quite easy to accidentally overhear people talking downstairs if you hold an upturned glass to the floorboards and accidentally put your ear to it. She heard her father say that Tiffany didn't have to go away at all. She heard her mother say that all girls wondered what there was out there in the world, so it was best to get it out of her system. Besides, she was a very capable girl with a good head on her shoulders. Why, with hard work, there was no reason why one day she couldn't be a servant to someone quite important like Aunt Hetty had been and live in a house with an inside privy. Her father said she'd find that scrubbing floors was the same everywhere. Her mother said, well, in that case, she'd get bored and come back home after the year was up and, by the way, what did prowess mean? Superior skill? thought Tiffany to herself, 
They did have an old dictionary in the house, but her mother never opened it because the sight of all those words upset her. Tiffany had read it all the way through. And that was it. And suddenly here she was, a month later, wrapping her old boots, which had been worn by all her sisters before her, in a piece of clean rag and putting them in the second-hand suitcase her mother had bought her, which looked as if it was made of a bad cardboard or pressed grape pips mixed with earwax and had to be held together with string. There were goodbyes. She cried a bit and her mother cried a lot and her little brother Wentworth cried as well just in case he could get a sweet for doing so. Tiffany's father didn't cry but gave her a silver dollar and rather gruffly told her to be sure to write home every week which is a man's way of crying. She said goodbye to the cheeses and the dairy and the sheep in the paddock and even to Ratbag the cat. Then everyone apart from the cheeses and the cat stood at the gate and waved to her and Miss Tick well, except for the sheep too, until they'd gone nearly all the way down a chalky white lane to the village. And then there was silence except for the sound of their boots on the flinty surface and the endless song of the skylarks overhead. It was late August and very hot, and the new boots pinched. I should take them off if I was you, said Miss Tick after a while. Tiffany sat down by the side of the lane and got her old boots out of the case. She didn't bother to ask how Miss Tick knew about the tight new boots. Witches paid attention. The old boots, even though she had to wear several pairs of socks with them, were much more comfortable and really easy to walk in. They had been walking since long before Tiffany was born and knew how to do it. And are we going to see any little men today? Miss Tick went on once they were walking again. I don't know, Miss Tick, said Tiffany. I told them a month ago I was leaving. They're very busy at this time of year, but there's always one or two of them watching me. Miss Tick looked around quickly. I can't see anything or hear anything. No, that's how you can tell they're here, said Tiffany. It's always a bit quieter if they're watching me, but they won't show themselves while you're with me. They're a bit frightened of hags. That's the word for witches, she added quickly. It's nothing personal. Miss Tick sighed. When I was a little girl, I'd have loved to see the Pixies, she said. I used to put out little saucers of milk. Of course, later on, I realised that wasn't quite the thing to do. No, you should have used a strong liquor, said Tiffany. She glanced at the hedge and thought she saw, just for a snap of a second, a flash of red hair, and she smiled a little nervously. Tiffany had been, if only for a few days, the nearest a human being can be to Queen of the Fairies. Admittedly, she'd been called a Kelder rather than a Queen, and the Nakmak Fiegel should only be called Fairies to their face if you were looking for a fight. On the other hand, the Nakmak Fiegel were always looking for a fight, in a cheerful sort of way, that is, and when they had no one to fight, they fought one another, and if one was all by himself, he'd kick his own nose just to keep in practice. Technically, they had lived in Fairyland, but had been thrown out probably for being drunk. And now, because if you'd ever been their Kelder, they never forgot you. They were always there. There was always one somewhere on the farm or circling on a buzzard high over the chalk downs, and they watched her to help and protect her, whether she wanted them to or not, that is. Tiffany had been as polite as possible about this. She had hidden her diary right at the back of her drawer and blocked up the cracks in the privy with wadded paper and done her best with the gaps in the bedroom floorboards too. They were little men, after all. She was sure they tried to remain unseen so as not to disturb her, but she'd got very good at spotting them. They granted wishes, not the magical fairy tale three wishes, the ones they always go wrong in the end, but ordinary everyday ones. The Nakmak Fiegel were immensely strong and fearless and incredibly fast, but they weren't good at understanding that what people said often wasn't what they meant. One day, in the dairy, Tiffany had said, oh, I wish I had a sharper knife to cut this cheese, and her mother's sharpest knife was, qu was, knife was quivering in the table beside her almost before she'd got the words out. I wish this rain would clear up was probably okay because the Fiegels couldn't do actual magic, but she learned to have to be careful not to wish for anything that might be achievable by some small, determined, strong, fearless and fast men who were also not above giving someone a good kick in if they felt like it. Wishes needed thought. She was never likely to say out loud, I wish that I could marry a handsome prince but knowing that if you did, you'd probably open a door to find a stunned prince, a tied-up priest, and an Akmak Fiegel grinning cheerfully at ready, and ready to act as best man definitely made you watch what you said. But they could be helpful in a haphazard way. 
and she'd taken to leaving out for them things that her family didn't need but might be useful to little people, like tiny mustard spoons, pins, a soup bowl that could make a nice bath for a feagle, and, in case they didn't get the message, some soap. They didn't steal the soap. Her last visit to the ancient burial mound high on the chalk down where the Pixies lived had been to attend the wedding of Rob Anybody, the big man of the clan, to Jeannie of the Long Lake. She was going to be the new Kelder and spend most of the rest of her life in the mound having babies like a queen bee. Feagles from other clans had all turned up for the celebration because if there's one thing a Feagle likes more than a party, it's a bigger party. And if there's anything better than a bigger party, it's a bigger party with someone else paying to, for the drink. To be honest, Tiffany had felt a little bit out of place, being ten times as tall as the next tallest person there, but she'd been treated very well and Rob Anybody had made a long speech about her, calling her our fine big wee young hag before falling face first into the pudding. It had all been very hot and very loud, but she'd joined in the cheer when Jeannie had carried Rob anybody over a tiny broomstick that had been laid on the floor. Traditionally, both the bride and the groom should jump over the broomstick, but equally traditionally, no self-respect and feagle would be sober on his wedding day. She'd been warned that it would be a good idea to leave then because of the traditional fight between the bride's clan and the groom's clan, which could take until Friday. Tiffany had bowed to Jeannie, because that's what hags did, and had a good look at her. She was small and sweet and pretty, but she also had a glint in her eye and a certain proud lift to her chin. Knack-mack fegal girls were very rare, and they grew up knowing they were going to be Kelders one day, and Tiffany had a definite feeling that Rob Anybody was going to find married life trickier than he thought. Right, we'll leave it there for tonight, all right? Tomorrow, I reckon... We're going to get reintroduced to the Nack Mac Fiegel. I can't wait to do my, my accent again. <laughs> right, I hope that was tolerable. Tol I hope it was all right for you tonight and my voice wasn't too flat. I just can't hear it. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be a little bit better. All right, see you soon. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.